is the Fantasy Alarm NBA DFS show with John Impemba and James Grande. What is going on, FA Nation? John Impemba here with James Grande. Welcome to the Fantasy Alarm NBA DFS Playbook Preview Show. We got three games here on a Tuesday to discuss. We got Sixers, Knicks, made the best series of the entire playoff so far. Orlando, Cleveland, and Indiana, Milwaukee on tap here for these three games. Sir James, how are we doing, my friend? Doing well. Uh, this is an interesting slate because, obviously, like you mentioned, Philly Knicks has been an incredible series. Unfortunate that it has to happen in the first round. Uh, Orlando, Cleveland has been just massacre times four. Uh, whoever has been on the home floor has just blown the other play, the other team out. Yep. And then Indiana Milwaukee is just a series of unfortunate event after unfortunate event after unfortunate event. The Giannis injuries obviously worse than we were led to believe. Mm-hmm. The Dame injury is obviously new, but that's concerning because he's doubtful to play. Uh, Bobby Portis got ejected last game. Patrick Beverly was hurt last game. Middleton is probable, but he left again last game. So Milwaukee is an absolute mess of a team. So yeah. um, this is one, this is one of those slates. The Knicks have a lot of injury news pending. Um, we already know Boyan's out. Brunson's probable, uh, but Mitchell Robinson, we don't we don't know, unsure if he's going to return. There was some pretty good value in that game with no Mitchell yeah. Robinson. So yeah. we'll see um, what happens there. But for a Three games late. There's a lot of injury news. Obviously, some some spend ups we'll be able to get to, but uh, it's definitely interesting overall. Yeah, agreed. Here, uh, let's go ahead and just break it down. We'll start off with Philly Knicks, as I mentioned, best series uh, of the playoffs really so far. Maybe Clippers Mavericks have had some good yep. matchups uh, there as well. But uh, Philly side starting things off here. Joel Embiid is ten nine. Maxi down to eighty four hundred dollars. Uh, with the 76ers, those are your top two uh, plays. JoJo's been dirty, man. <laughs> he is playing an interesting game here uh, in the playoffs against the Knicks. Uh, some strong performances. Obviously, had the 50 bomb, double double uh, last time out, but they, you know, coming off a loss here uh, against the Knicks in a game that they had a lead in. Um, what are your What are your thoughts on him as they go back into New York? I mean, he didn't sit in the second half. Um, couldn't score in the fourth quarter. It was like a good fantasy standpoint. And that's really all that matters. Um, it's just, is there enough value to get to him? I think that he's perfectly fine. The, the peripheral stats still having trouble, obviously getting up and down the floor. We found yeah. out he has Bell's palsy, which he's another thing he's de- dealing with, which explains the, the eye thing and why he's right. wearing sunglasses inside and stuff. Um, so I'm okay getting to Embiid if you're comfortable. I do think there's obviously plenty of value in Milwaukee if that's the way the route you want to go and are comfortable yeah. going. Um, same thing with Maxi. I mean, he wasn't he had a very quiet game four after a really, really good start to the series. Um the, what you know about Tyrese Maxi is he's gonna play basically every match, especially because it's an elimination game. He might not come off the floor. Like it, it wouldn't be surprising if he played a straight 48 minutes in this game. Um, maybe he just sits once in the first half and then plays the whole second half. But um, I expect Tyrus Maxey to be heavily involved, him and Embiid. And then everyone else is just a secondary play at this point um, because it's really hard for anyone else to do anything when Embiid's taking 19 shots and 15 free throws and Maxey's taking 21 shots and four free throws. Like Toby, Toby has been nowhere to be found. So you can't really play that. I, it's not even interesting in, for me. Yeah. It'd probably be like Ubre. Yeah, Ubre's I, been pretty good, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, and Lowry would be like the other two guys that you mm-hmm. can like comfortably get to. Even with the return of DeAnthony Melton, he played seven minutes in game four after DMP in game three. Uh, he's just not going to be a factor in this series. and He's just the – so uh, Ubre and Lowry would both be secondary plays. And that's like – basically it if you wanted to take a shot on a $3,200 campaign who has provided like a little bit of a spark for the yeah. the 76ers basically taking like buddy healed minutes that they probably expected buddy healed to play but um 
if that's a route you wanted to take, you can. If he has like that random game three outbreak where he made a bunch of shots and then suddenly you're like, oh, campaign 21 fantasy points at min salary. Yeah. I didn't even play game two. So um, it's Embiid, Maxi at the top, Ubre, Lowry in mid tier. And then like if you're multi entering campaigns. I thought it was interesting commentary on Buddy Healed. If you watched the game the other day, they were talking about sort of. Um, you know, he, they acquired him, expected him to sort of play a role. They asked him to kind of fit in his system, and he basically wasn't just doing what they wanted him to do when he was on the floor. They wanted him to space and be patient and wait for the plays to come to him, and he would get on the floor and just chuck, and they're like, we're not looking for you to do that here, buddy. And uh, he basically took himself out of their rotation by the way he was playing. So um, kind of weird. We've seen, we've seen other guys. You know, Alec Burks can't get off the bench for the Knicks. You know, he, that guy was ripping it up for Detroit, you know, off the bench. So uh, some guys just can't find ways and begin to get into playing time when they go to new teams here, even when the perception of those players and fits like, oh, this is great. They got Buddy Heald. Right. Well, I guess not. Um, going to the Knicks side, I mean, Brunson uh, took the shove from uh, Joe Allen Bede and became a, a, a robot and just did not miss in the second half of this game. Yeah, uh, Knicks franchise playoff record for points scored, uh, 47. Uh, I was told, uh, actually the whole world was told, that he was too small to be a number one on the offensive roster. Also, like, I think 44 people were drafted ahead of Jalen Brunson um, in whatever draft he was uh, selected in. That seems... Hey, Isaiah Thomas once held the team to an Eastern Conference Finals, you know, so like... Seems same like thing. Mistake. Last pick, last pick in the draft. Man's five six. You know, like. Nikola Jokic, second round pick, drafted yeah. during a Taco Bell commercial. Second, second round <laughs> picks, uh, pretty, pretty good. Um, dude, they were up 2-0 with Jalen Brunson not making any shots, right? And yeah. then he started to make shots, and it's not only the shots being made. He has back to back nukes with double doubles, ten mm-hmm. and thirteen assists. I mean, he's just really doing everything for the Knicks. There's no reason to not want to get him into your lineup. They don't have anything that can stop him. They don't it they have size when they guard him with Batum. Doesn't matter. They have annoyance with Kyle Lowry. Doesn't matter. Like there's nothing Philly can do. I do think that it matters that Joel Embiid can't move because Brunson yeah. can get to wherever he wants on the floor and Embiid and B can't really do anything about it because his knees. Yeah, I, got, so I saw. Bad, so. uh, well, again, I watched a lot um, of this game here because you know if you're not watching this this game in this series, like I don't, you know, you're not a basketball fan here. Got all the way to the lane, basically like looped around, drove into the lane, and just did a little stop step over and beat and just floated it in. They he couldn't react quick enough to get to him, and you'd think Embiid would be able to jump. He can't get any leg, get any lift off of there to, to stop the shot. So, um, yeah, super fun player to watch. Um, and they need him because Josh Hart, uh, you know, really the only other guy that was doing anything in the series, he had just five points in that game, missed all of his shots. I'm uh, sorry, four points, went over seven. 17 rebounds is nice. He's rebounding like a fiend, but you know, nobody is helping J- Brunson here uh, score in that game. Again, but Hart's been really the best number two they've had. Deuce McBride looked good for stretches in that game uh, for them, but you know, DiVincenzo has disappeared at times. OG hasn't done enough throughout the series. So uh, it's been Brunson or, or Bus for the majority of it here. I will say, salute to OG. The last two games, he's mm-hmm. been really, really good for them. Um, he was, he had like half his rebounds were offensive rebounds late in that yeah. game. And that really helped the Knicks get through. I, I said it games one and two, like if there was a chance that OG could play that many minutes then I would be interested, but for whatever reason in game one, he plays 31 <laughs> minutes and you're like, Oh, well that's kind of, that kind of sucks. And then last two, he played all but one minute in game number four. And I think Tibbs is looking at it like, Hmm, I could just do this again and right. close the series out. I'll probably do that again. And I do think it, it, the Knicks are very interesting, and it, it does, again, go back to the Embiid thing. Embiid can't even help on the glass. Like, he's struggling to rebound the basketball because he's immobile. And that is only going to benefit guys like Josh Hart and OG and Hartenstein and mm-hmm. possibly Precious Achua or, or slash Mitchell Robinson, depending on which backup center is there. It's just going to be impossible for Embiid to keep these guys off the glass, especially when... You watch Tyrese Maxey's just standing around. Ubre's just standing around. Like, no one's boxing out. The Knicks are just 
constantly crashing the glass. I like all I like all of them. I mean, Josh Hart gave you 36 fantasy points in a game right. he didn't he didn't make a shot in. Like that's just all you need to know about Josh Hart. Um again, played all but one minute. Him, OG, Hartenstein, foul trouble yeah, all happened in the matter four, of four one the quarter, third, right? Like, uh, which was <laughs> yeah, and then never played again. They just they closed the game with Precious and that was all she wrote. But like I would think I would play Hartenstein again and I, I would play um yeah. precious and mcbride especially i think that there's a chance that you're gonna see mcbride extended again especially with bowian out where like mcbride will probably just be the guy yeah. off the bench him and achua or him and robinson just the guys that fill the gaps right for the minutes like they're they're oh brunson needs a six minute breather will those six minutes go to mcbride and hart needs a two minute breather will those go to mcbride and DiVincenzo's playing yeah. 30 minutes well those 18 <laughs> go to McBride. And it's like, so yeah, I do think Deuce is probably going to play mid twenties minutes. Um, and I don't think the, I think the Bowie and yeah, if he gets going, there's a chance that, that you don't see DDV sort of get back on the floor the way we, we, how we've seen this going. Also, uh, Orlando Cleveland, you said it, whoever's been calling the home floor has dominated the series so far. I didn't think it was going to go the way I thought. I thought Cleveland was just sort of an overall better team and Orlando wasn't going to be up for the test quite yet. And then Bancaro's like, you come down to Miami, I'm going to show you what it's about in game four, or game three, rather. Game four wasn't his best performance. By, by, right. Franz. But then Franz Wagner Franz. was like, no, you step back, I'll take it. 34 actual for him there. So the two stars of Miami traded off. Jalen Suggs had himself a hell of a, of a game the other day as well. Uh, you know, against uh, the same game against Cleveland, 9 of 11, 24. He followed it up, kind of a dud, but... Again, enough when your defense is holding the opponent to 83 and 89 points. So um, that's sort of been a trend for the series. Orlando's held Cleveland scoring down. They just haven't been able to score when they've been on the road. If they can get any offense going, I don't think Cleveland's going to be able to score. We've seen Orlando play the best defense in the NBA all season long. Kind of crazy, right? I think this is a very appealing team, uh, Orlando. I know that's like, a little probably going to be a little contrarian i don't think it's a coincidence though that these two things happen for orlando when they go back to the wendell carter starting lineup right we talked about how dominant jared allen jared allen jared allen owned the first two games of the series like it was like mitchell was good and mobley was good and garland was fine but jared allen was the best player on the floor he was everywhere and then they go back to wendell carter at home and it's not that Wendell Carter put up these like gaudy numbers, yeah, he's but like better, yeah. he's a center. He's an actual center. Like it kept Jared Allen off the floor. Wendell Carter can space. It kept Jared Allen away from the rim. And then you just don't have that same that same punch as you do when Jonathan Isaac is right. in, you know is starting. And yes, Jonathan Isaac is big, but he's like naturally he's been a small forward, yeah. power forward his whole career. And now you're asking him to start at center. So I, I do think Orlando just top to, to bottom, they're like the only team that didn't change their rotation. They're still playing 10 guys. Like they're still mm -hmm. playing them all. Um, I think Paolo is definitely interesting in tournaments. Obviously it's been an up and down series for him. The up being yeah. 61 in three quarters. He did not play a single minute in that fourth quarter and had 31 and four, 14 and five. Franz has obviously, I think Franz has been the most consistent magic player through four games. Um, 30 plus fantasy points in all four as a 60 burger and a 40 fantasy point game as well. So I think Franz Wagner at, at 71 is interesting. Jalen Suggs, 58, didn't play great in game uh, game four, but it was pretty consistent in the first three games, 40, 25, 30 fantasy points. Uh, I think Jalen Suggs is in line for yeah. monster minutes in games that stay competitive. We haven't seen it because they haven't been competitive, but um, Jalen Suggs definitely in play. I do have a little bit of interest in Wendell Carter starting. So the last two games, obviously 24 yeah. and 25 minutes, he's just suffered from not playing fourth quarters. Like he hasn't right. subbed back into the fourth quarter. And, you know, Paolo only played two minutes in the last fourth quarter. And the same thing applies for the game prior where he didn't play in the fourth quarter. So like with the with how well Wendell, Wendell Carter actually was probably the the reason why that game shifted in game three because 
their third quarter was 30. They won the third quarter in game four, 37 to 10. And Wendell Carter had a 7-0 run himself and was definitely coming back in that game uh, late. But obviously the blow got out of hand and you Mo Wagner and Goga Batadze gets run. But I think Wendell Carter at 4,300 is a very interesting punt play on a slate that, you know, Brunson and Bede, possibly Donovan Mitchell. I mean, Halliburton, Siakam are all pretty expensive. Chris Middleton, mm-hmm. obviously, team by himself. So I think Wendell Carter is interesting. Run out of the starting five, Gary Harris. Don't think you need to go there. Uh, very, very low floor. But I think their bench is interesting. Jonathan Isaac, dude, last two games coming off the bench, especially last game. Jonathan Isaac, five for seven. This is the John Isaac that you and mm-hmm. I like play or even in the regular season would debate, right? Okay, can uh, is this a night you right. play 20 minute Jonathan Isaac? Well, if he goes 14, 7, 1, 2, and 1 with four made threes, you can. Uh, he's been okay in this series, 230 fantasy point games, 216 fantasy point um, games, tournaments only. Mo Wagner has been super consistent. Yeah. If you want to play under 4K, probably going to get you somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes and then, you know, 18 fantasy points or so. So I think that you could play like probably like seven, they're like top seven guys. And even if you, Markel Fultz has even um, kind of helped turn the series Agreed. around for them a little bit. Uh, going to the Cleveland side. Again, we thought we had the answers to the series, uh, given the way the first couple of games have gone. Uh, they, you know, Donovan Mitchell not perform well on the road. Jared Allen was an absolute monster at home, not performing all that well on the road here. But now it's back in Cleveland. So do you think that it's just simply the home road or, you know, do we expect the same type of production here? So for the record, I picked Orlando in seven. So I do think that they're going to steal one on the road. I don't know if it's this game. I don't know if it's game four. Um, They don't, Cleveland just looks out of sorts. I mean, even, even like the game two or Donovan Mitchell, where they win by 10, but it wasn't necessarily close. I mean, nine for 22, and that's three straight really bad offensive performances from Donovan Mitchell. The last two, they switched Jalen Suggs onto him. Um, They had been using Gary Harris, and now they're using a combination of both, a little size with Franz. Like, they're throwing a lot of bodies at Donovan Mitchell that's giving him a lot of problems. I mentioned the Darius Garland back thing. He still has not been able to be extended in this series past 32 minutes. And then, like... When Jared Allen wasn't grabbing 18 to 20 rebounds, they just have had a hard time like right. in in these games. So I think with Cleveland, like you can definitely get to them. Like Mitchell's too cheap for his upside. Allen's too cheap for his ceiling. Same thing could be said for Evan Mobley. Mobley's been Mobley's been pretty good um in three of the four games. Obviously, game three, just they were terrible in general. I don't want to get to Garland at 61, but in tournaments, if you're playing multi multiple lineups, um, Max Schroes is going to play probably 30 minutes. If he makes shots and there's a ceiling, I think Harris Levert is playing mid twenties, but like, hasn't not, has not been a guy. It's guy. the Orlando like, defense effect, is, man. They're so good defensively. It is. Which is, which is dude, which is realistically why I think they can steal a game on the road. Because if so, they steal a game yeah. on the road, it, I mean, I, they're obviously, Cleveland doesn't have to steal a game on the road to win this series, but like you have right. to, if to play Boston, like if you advance, right. So get right. it out of the way now, <laughs> if, if you, this, if this, when this goes back to Orlando for game six, like you gotta get it out. Like you gotta, you gotta win a game on the road. Um, but they need Levert. He is their yeah. Right, basically their bench. Like they don't have a they don't have a good center room outside. Yeah, they just like rotate Allen, Allen Mobley and Mobley. Five, so. they, yeah, Akoro's a, a zero offensively off the bench, and Yang, when he's not spacing, he's mm-hmm. hasn't made a shot all series. Like, um, so it, they need look more from Levert. I, I'm okay getting to him at 4,500 yeah. because the minutes are good, and you're not going to find like. A and you usually get like one game from caliber. like a random, you know, player on your team. Usually, when you carry through a series, right? Like, yeah. something, something's got it from Derek White and at home. tonight. You know, we've seen 
you know, Kayla Martin did it a couple of days ago. You, you get the Deuce McBride game. I think it was game one or something like that. Like you get these, you know, six man games come on and they pop and like, that's the reason they won that game. They need an offensive pick me up and Levert can certainly right. be that guy. So, um, you know, if they're down and out and yes. they need it, they're coming off some slow. Now they're back home. He could be a spark for them for sure. So. And I think, I think it's something to be said for him personally too, that this game's at home. Like that's probably a more sure. comfortable feeling for him, right? Like being in front of your home crowd, not having to like travel and have like those road jitters. So it's probably good for him to be back. Um, Agreed. To be uh, back. Go on over to the last game of the slate here. One that we're not sure it'll be all that competitive given sort of who's out of the lineup for Milwaukee here. Uh, but we got Indiana. They're on the road. No player higher than $8,700 on their team. You got Halliburton, Siakam, Turner, Top three price guys up over 7K here. Um, obviously, we were digging on Siakam earlier in the series. He's like come down to earth a little bit, but still putting out like great, great numbers for the price here. I mean, he how's he supposed to be this good when Miles Turner is he's uh, walking so Miles Turner can run, dude. Um, this is the best basketball of my Miles Turner's career. I've played him for three straight games. I, four, I think I've played actually played him, him all four years games. And and I'm, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not stopping now. Um, I, I'm, I'm, Miles Turner is my favorite. Very Indiana clearly a great Turner matchup music. for him. Uh, there's, I mean, there is yeah. nothing they can do unless Bobby <laughs> Portis <laughs> knocks him out. <laughs> Which is it's obviously in, in a lot to happen. Um, it's it's definitely it's happened before. Um, almost happened to Andrew Nembard, happened to Nikola Mirotic. I'm sure it's happened yeah. to uh, many other times in practice. Um, but like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I get to really any of their starting five. I think all their starting five is, is firmly in play here. Ne Andrew Nembard has been amazing for the last three games for them. Uh, he's going to be probably, if not the yeah, highest roster value day. play this slate. He's second. I mean, he's, you know, 30 fantasy points essentially in three straight games. Um, Neesmith playing all the minutes. And, you know, when he makes threes and has his defensive his games. defensive like assignments keep getting easier ceiling, and easier so. for him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they really do. I mean, they really He's out do. there against they, the Nassif. He's, he's like, what, this isn't the, this isn't the, uh, you know, the ABC. I was thinking again. Right yeah, into yeah. right into the right Kupa. Kupa. Yeah, this what's is going on here? Um, so I'd, I'd really play their starting five. Um, there's always a case for McConnell in tournaments. He had one of those TJ McConnell games last time out. And then, dude, Obi Toppin has been really good for three Called straight games. Called him out games. in the last show. And um, well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like, it's not going to be 24, 26 minutes. It's going to be what it's going to be. You see it, 17 to 20 minutes. But he's out there right. for a good time, not a long time. And Obi Toppin is going to be shooting a lot. Um, I expect the same seven guys to just continue to be the same seven guys. He keeps like, uh, Carla keeps like messing with the centers where he didn't um, play Jalen Smith in game four mm -hmm. or two, but he played him in one and three. So maybe, maybe he's only, maybe Jalen Smith yeah. is only playing an we'll, odd we'll, number. We'll games. never know the Jalen Smith um, rotation. So. No, I'll never know the Jalen Smith rotation, but um yeah, I think you can probably get to uh, taking us over to Milwaukee then. A lot of orange on the screen. We know Milton is yeah. probable, but Giannis isn't going to play. Lillard's most likely not playing. Pat Bev is probable as well. So I guess that's a good sign. Uh, Bobby Poe, not suspended, not ejected. So, you know, 7,600 could be their best player available. So, well, you know, I guess you start lineups with Middleton, Portis, Beverly. I don't know. What do you do here? So Middleton's great. Um, he has been great for every game this series. He's been great. So he's 8,500. It's not too expensive when he's the best player. Left that game. Didn't matter. I mean, like Bobby Portis was 50% owned. I was in the 50% that owned Bobby Portis right away. Looked like he was going to pay dividends. Four points, three rebounds in seven minutes. Gets ejected. But you saw at the game prior, Indiana is not a team that necessarily rebounds the ball well when Miles yeah. Turner's your, your center, right? Like, he's not a good rebounder. Portis does have 20-20 in his back. He just needs to stay on the floor. 
And, like, he's so crazy and psychotic. Like, why wouldn't they try to get in his head? Or, like, why wouldn't they? Like, he's already in his own head, probably, in this game. First sign of, like, chippiness. Right. Is he going to get ejected again? Um, so, I I'm good with Portis. There's obviously a really high ceiling. 7,600 isn't cheap, but it's a high ceiling. Brooke, Brooke Lopez was great the other day. Uh, 39 minutes, 42 fantasy didn't, points. Didn't, ha didn't have to worry about Rebound Bobby Portis. Rebound shy of a double-double. Yeah. Didn't have to worry about Bobby Portis. Uh, 39 minutes in back-to-back -back games. I think that's just what we're going to get right now. Doc kind of shrinking the rotation. Beverly's, I, I don't know what to make of it because he has an oblique strain that he was only able mm -hmm. to play 20 minutes with, but he's probable. He's already dealing with that like broken right. finger or fractured wrist or whatever it is. And now there's an oblique strain. I'm just like not, I don't love the price sure. with like multiple injuries. I think like with Beasley, like the starter, 25 minutes, 34 so. minutes. Yeah. So there, so the rotation that Doc basically deployed was three starters, big minutes. Portis, for all all likelihood, plays as many minutes as possible, right? Um, when Portis got ejected, uh, Pat Connaughton and Andre Jackson, or Andre Jackson, I guess technically checked into the game. Uh, Six fifty nine. Let's see if this is correct. Did uh, Andre Jackson and Pat Connaughton were for sub for Portis and Chris Middleton. Um, like Jackson's a, a solid value ish, yeah. right? Um, he's 3,800. He's a very good defender. Six rebounds, seven assists. He's a really big guard. Two for four shooting, four shots is even like a ceiling for him. So I'm I'm okay with Andre Jackson. He's obviously yeah. not min salary like he was last late, or 3,600 was not min salary, but um, $200 more. It's fine especially if Beverly is limited at all, I still probably spend the $800 more to get to Malik Beasley with Beasley starting eight for 12, mm -hmm. four for seven from three, 20 actual. I mean, if they want to keep pace with Indiana, they need Beasley to make shots. So we, I, I would probably still lean. Yeah. Lean we that, saw the one he went on with Utah last year where like for a month, he basically was a 20 point per game scorer. So if they have to lean on him to shoot, like he's not shy about it. So, um, all right, well, let's build a lineup. I imagine we probably have to plug in the $4,600 Malik Beasley here, right? And Nembard, yeah, that would probably be like yeah. two of the better values uh, of the slate. Nembard there, 47. Uh, Beasley is what shooting guard, Nembard shooting guard as well. Okay. Uh, you can play Nembard, point guard, there, guard, and we'll go point guard, Nembard. Uh, Miles Turner, Turner and center. center works. All right, we got 6,700. We didn't give a shout to Halliburton, by the way, but we uh, I know he's questionable again with these back spasms. Um, but I plugged in Brunson because he's an animal. Uh, probably find a way to Middleton as well at 85. Middleton gives us 51, so we got another value play. It would be precious. It would be precious if it's not precious. We could play John sure. Isaac at forty four. Um, we could play. I think these well, are better on that Isaac price. Now for we top it. Um, would you rather Struess or Toppin? Does, well, does Jackson play? Jackson is in the rotation here. I I mean he's going to be in the rotation, but I guess it just depends on like what the minutes like his minutes coming in place sure, of Bobby sure. Portis minutes yeah, yeah, yeah. could be, you know, like, like I'm not saying he's not, but like there was a sure. lot of weird stuff in Milwaukee. Like Beverly played 20 minutes and Portis got ejected. And so what does that mean for mm -hmm. the rotation right. right now? I, I would, I would honestly, I would probably play one of the Pacers, either Neesmith or Toppin okay, would probably be good. the answer there. Neesmith, Neesmith is probably safer. Toppin gets us someone 7, else. 7,100 from like, or Jared, Jared Allen back at home. Yeah, it would pr like, right, yeah. Be, you, who do yeah, you be who one do of those two. Maybe one of those two. Um, 
I mean, Jared Allen obviously has the double double, like the more mm-hmm. likelihood to double double, where Franz is definitely more likely sure. to score thirty of the. So like, I, I'd probably lean Jared Allen yeah, at I'm good home, with it. but. Uh, example on it for everybody then, uh, Andrew Nembard, Malik Beasley, Chris Middleton, John Isaac, Miles Turner, Jalen Brunson, Obi Toppin, Jared Allen, uh, Sacken, Indiana, Milwaukee. We got some one-offs there. Brunson being our top spend up of the slate. Uh, be able to look out for the playbook. Dylan Clemens will have that for all of you guys. Grindy will have some pick and prop plays for everybody as well over on the Fantasy Alarm site. So make sure you check those out. Get in the Fantasy Alarm Discord. And if you're not already checking out our Better Edge free pick one contest. Uh, you can go ahead and sign up for Better Edge. Go to fansom.com slash pick them. Free pick them contest every day for the NBA playoffs. Winners can get a month free of Fantasy Alarm All Pro or a Fantasy Alarm t-shirt. You can sign up and register your account. No credit card, no deposit needed, and they'll give you $10 free. So go to fansom.com slash pick them. Sign up and register Better Edge. You can scan that QR code there on the screen. Take part in our playoff challenge pick them contest for this three game slate. Pick your favorite picks, uh, pr- player props, and pick them selections in that contest. The winner gets a free month of Fantasy Alarm or a t shirt, whatever they decide to choose there. But you can't hate getting $10 free dollars simply by signing up and confirming your email address. That's it. No credit card needed. Uh, so, again, go check that out. Betteredge.com, fantasyalarm.com slash pick them. Uh, Grande and I, that's a champions, wrong one. Brian and I will be back tomorrow breaking down the uh, the, the uh, Wednesday slate. So be on the lookout for that, everybody. Good luck with your lineups, and we'll catch you all later.